Hi guys, welcome back to Between Us Foos. Today we're going to be talking about everything K-pop. Um, if you're an urban dancer that has always been interested about the K-pop community, the crazy huge K-pop community, today is your lucky day. We're going to talk all about it. So Between Us Foos, let's talk about it. Hello guys, hello, hello. Welcome to Between Us Foos. Thanks for joining us. Um, we have a couple of people that are working here and resident K-pop fans <laughs> in the <laughs> studio. <laughs> um, so um, I'm going to go ahead and go around and just have you guys introduce yourselves and just, I guess, how long you've been a K-pop fan, if you can even put a number to that. Whoever wants to go first. <laughs> you can go first. Okay. Um, I'm Donita, and I've been a fan since... Mm, mm. <laughs> I don't know. It, somewhere in high school. I really don't know which year, but somewhere in high school. Oh, gotcha. So since 2000, between 2008 and 11, somewhere. Oh, gotcha. Hi, I'm Eric. And I guess I've been a fan since 2007. Wow. I feel like I know that year specifically because a certain song came out in 2007. You know what I mean? So I can like, <laughs> yeah, I have like physical benchmarks. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so it's been a while. It's been 13 years. Oh my God. That's how long we've known each other. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's true. That, that's true. Yeah. Probably true yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, my kind of relationship with K-pop is, um, I mostly come from the urban community and I do manage the K-pop program here. But, and that's kind of the biggest extent, and obviously um, having known you guys for a while, that's my, the biggest extent that I know the K-pop community, so very surface level. Um, so today's kind of like an interesting day because I'm gonna learn a lot <laughs> um, from you guys. So, um, but first and foremost, like how, I know that you mentioned, Ke uh, Kevin, <laughs> I mentioned Eric, that you got into K-pop by a specific song. Just kind of like, yeah, like is, how explain that story. How did you get into K-pop? Um, so then I guess I was just browsing YouTube and I feel like, like, I feel like because of like how popular YouTube is now, like we feel like it's been around forever, but then, you know, like it honestly like blew up like very recently, I feel, you know, like within the last like decade. And then I was just with my friend, Chi Fan, and she was like, do you know this song? And I was like, no, I don't. Cause it's not in English. And she's like, it's fine. Here, listen to it. <laughs> and it was a song by Big Bang called Lies. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, this is cool. And then even back then, I feel like YouTube, like, you know, like they have like the suggested stuff on the side. So like once I mm -hmm. watched one, I was like, this is cool. Then I just kind of went down like the rabbit hole. <laughs> yep. And I've been in it since then. Dang. And then what about you, Doe? <clears throat> like what got me started? Mm -hmm. um, actually, Korean dramas got me started. Mm -hmm. uh, so I started watching those first and just like their TV world. And then um, they would always have K-pop idols as actors and part of the Korean drama. So I think I was really curious about, I forgot who, I think it was like Boys Over Flowers. <clears throat> That's how I got, oh yeah. So my first group was, um, I'm gonna need help with some names here. What was it? <laughs> um, SS. SS501. Yes, SS501. That was the first group that I like really got into because of uh, Boys Over Flowers. And then from then I found out about Big Bang and then just um, all of the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> World of K-pop. <laughs> yeah, I um, I, yeah. I think for me, the first time I was exposed to K-pop, I' pretty sure was um, the Wonder Girls Nobody video. That's I feel like where a lot of people kind of got exposed to it. You know, they I think they were like Wonder Girls were on TFC or something, <laughs> and like that was like the first time I ever seen it. And then having known you guys, I know that you did like a K-pop choreo competition video or yeah. something like that oh yeah and i think was it to big bangs um we did a lot oh, we did a lot in yeah. that one year yeah, yeah. um it was um, we did wonder girls would be my baby oh, so that was oh yeah, yeah, yeah. the first one the first and then one. we did a couple of big bang songs oh, yeah, yeah yeah i think it was be, not be my baby it was, it was bad, bad boy bad boy yeah, yeah downtown <laughs> i remember carly was there too yeah. <laughs> um but yeah so i mean K-pop is like kind of a word that's thrown around, I think, especially in the urban community, just kind of, um, we kind of see it as like almost this like enigma, like it's its its own thing, it's its own thing, and they're just kind of do, living their own best life and stuff. <laughs> but I think because of that, a lot of people don't really fully know 
what k-pop and what that actually implies or what that actually means so explaining it to myself and maybe other people who are curious about it what is k-pop and you can really answer this in whatever way that you want um well k-pop is literally like the shortened ver- version of korean pop music right mm-hmm. but then i feel like um when you think about like k-pop music it it's not just pop music, even though like it's Korean pop music, it's like Korean like R&B, Korean rap, Korean indie music, like it's all under this giant umbrella. And then I feel like it's kind of hard to differentiate between like, oh, what makes like indie, you know, like K-indie music, K-indie versus like K-pop indie music. Hmm. But I feel like that's something I still don't really fully know the difference between, but then it's just kind of there. And I feel like as an international fan, it's not really a big thing we talk about here, but I feel like Koreans like talk about that a lot because um kind of how we see like pop music here I would say like it's kind of like mainstream you know what I mean Mm -hmm. like everyone's popular like everyone has like a certain level of respect but then it depends on the audience you know what I mean like if it's an older person they might not say see like oh pop music isn't real music you know what I mean oh yeah but then it's like kind of the same over there like K-pop idols are very popular with like young, you know, like teens and like young adults and stuff, but then they're not considered real musicians, which I think is interesting because K-pop, I don't know, like to explain K-pop, I guess like even though like there's a focus on music, there's like, they have to like a K-pop idol can't just be like a good singer, you know what I mean? Like they have to look good, they have to be able to dance, they have to be able to act, they have to be able to be funny, like they Mm. have to be able to be like so much more things than just like the musical aspect but what did you ask me that is a very hard thing That's, first yeah. of all i'm no expert and i call i'm more of an alumni fan um <laughs> but yeah like i guess the simplest way to think about it is it is k-pop like what is k-pop right Mm -hmm. i think it's a like a it's kind of asking like what is urban (laughs) (laughs) you know what i mean so it's kind of hard to to describe and define it really Mm -hmm. it's a culture it is uh entertainment it is a lifestyle even like so yeah (laughs) yeah is um because i know that for example, though you mentioned um, a K drama and stuff, is mm-hmm. is other, I guess, mediums under the same umbrella as K pop? If that makes sense, I don't know if I worded that the best way. Uh, but... No, no, yeah. Okay, so then like they have their like they would be called K dramas. So then, if you like, kind of go back like history wise, I know that like there's something called like the How You Wave, like H A L Y U, yeah, yeah. And then like the first wave was through Korean dramas. And then it's just talking about like how uh, South Korean like culture in general is like spreading. So the first wave was just mainly in Asia. Like, you know, like K-dramas got popular like throughout like East Asia, Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. And then now we're kind of in the second wave, which I feel like is the global, the global wave, which Mm -hmm. is like how you 2.0. And that's like spread by, you know, like Girls' Generation, BTS and all that stuff. And I don't know. I feel like when you think K-pop culture, like that might sound foreign to you, but think like pop culture but Korean. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like our Backstreet Boys. It's like our Britney Spears Mm -hmm. um, to, you know, and sort, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like these idols and stuff. Yeah, exactly. So that's that's like the almost uh, parallel version here. Got it, got it, got it. I mean, speaking of artists, actually, I'm just kind of curious. What's your guys' favorite artists overall? (laughs) Um... (laughs) (laughs) I love Big Bang. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, yeah, uh, I think that entertainment company, YG, has always been like in my tops. Like a lot of their groups are in mm-hmm. my top five. You know what I mean? I have other favorites, but Big Bang always, um, I like their music. Yeah. I like their, like, yeah, I like. Uh, all their members like i like all of their personalities and stuff like that um but yeah that's like my true first love is big bang (laughs) yeah the thing about big bang is even i 
you know, know who they know are. who they are. And I know, well, maybe it's because <laughs> through being friends with you guys, but like I know <laughs> each individual like person mm-hmm. on that on that. I was gonna call it team <laughs> on that group, and basically like their personalities and just like their style and stuff. It's mm-hmm. so unique and stuff. So yeah, they're pretty cool. Um, what about you, Eric? Um, well, I would say like my gateway group is like Big Bang, <laughs> yeah, and like Wonder Girls because they were just like really big around the same time. Mm-hmm. And then you know, there's like older groups like Girls Generation and Kara. And then I feel like since I'm still like into K-pop now, obviously like a lot of my favorite groups are the current ones because they're active. Mm-hmm. You know, like Twice, Red Velvet, IU. Like I'm very partial to female artists, but then that's just like personal taste. Mm-hmm. But I do think it's interesting that the K-pop industry is very oversaturated. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, like literally hundreds of new groups debut like each year. But oh then like God. you know, like five make it. You know what I mean? Wow. That's wild. And it's like it's crazy. It's just it's just interesting it's because we're like in like maybe third or fourth generation of K pop groups. And then cause we got into it like during second generation where I feel like it's like, you know, when it kind of first starts getting like globally popular. So mm-hmm. then I feel like they're very authentic, you know? But then like as more and more groups come out like I can say like, you know, they might be like better trained or like maybe like arguably more talented. But then it's like they don't like not all of them, obviously, but like you're kind of missing like, you know, like the star power, like the charisma, mm-hmm. like kind of like what makes them unique. Because now like there's still there are a yeah, lot there's so many. And wow. it's like they just remind you like, oh, this is kind of like this group I and see. this group. You yeah, know, like, like they remind mm. me of this girl group. And yeah, mm-hmm. and I it's see. just like how the industry is like, it's not like their fault. Like everyone's yeah. just trying to like achieve their dream. Right. Mm hmm. I mean, it's similar, I mean, obviously here in the United States, right? Like, mm-hmm. what makes you different? What makes you unique compared to the other R&B singers or whatever? Or even mm-hmm. singers who dance or, like, anything. Um, but I was, I mean, it's interesting to me to just really hear almost the terminology that you're using um, in terms of, like, was it how you? How you, um, yeah. Yeah, like, that's something brand new that I actually had no idea about. And then you're even talking about generation. So those are, like, kind of, like, even the subgroups under these... I guess how you if that if I'm understanding correctly. Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> so it's just interesting that it's so I guess structured or there's actually like a terminology for that because mm-hmm. to my knowledge like American pop music and or whatever like doesn't really have that um, as far as I know unless like you can call it like the Ariana Grande era or whatever oh, but yeah. like we don't have the specific mean, yeah. like like these artists came out all at the same time. Mm-hmm. So yeah, like I. It's it's pretty interesting to see how big K-pop got over the over the past couple of years. I mean, obviously with social media and with just the boom of, I, I guess being able to access um, mm-hmm. things from across borders and stuff. It's a lot that helped it a lot. But I think um, if you guys, if either of you guys are knowledgeable about this, like what really was the catalyst to have K-pop like explode for lack of a better word um was it a gradual thing or was there definite like moments where um at least to your to best of your knowledge like where it really began to blow up are you talking about like globally or in asia or in south you know, korea probably both because I'm, I'm curious even to like why korea specifically um it you know has this has this huge market where there's obviously very talented people globally. Everywhere else. So I'm just curious, <laughs> like, how specifically South Korea was able to achieve this, you know? Um, to the That's best of your fandom. knowledge, I know we're, none of us here are historians mm-hmm. or anything, but um, just at least uh, with the exposure that you guys have, what is your knowledge about that? Mm-hmm. Um, like I'm just going to throw stuff out there. Um, I think maybe that it exploded i have a lot of theories like i'm wondering if it's because the same way i got into it which was korean dramas you know what i mean Mm -hmm. so like because those are more uh, approachable in a sense versus music then you can kind of also uh, i feel like i i watched an interview regarding this this topic Mm -hmm. about how it, it blew up I feel like maybe at the time, like people were just looking for um, someone to look up to, really, like idols, really. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like at the time in South Korea, um, whatever political stuff was happening, like 
K-pop was the thing where it kind of distracted you from that and like had, you know, you can focus on something more positive and like mm -hmm. uh, uplifting in a sense. Um, I could see it that way, especially the first generation really came out like in the like the 80s. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So historically, like, like politically, like I think it just came out that way, as it does here in America too. Like, right. That's how we turn to our music, and um, every every type of entertainment that we look towards. But right. um, that's just my theory. <laughs> <clears throat> well, I think, um, like it's kind of like what you mentioned earlier. That's like I feel like that's exactly what it is. Like, cause how you 2.0, it like coincides with web 2.0, which is like, mm. if, you don't, oh. if you're not familiar with that, are you? No. Oh, it's kind of like <laughs> it, the oh, yeah. era of like, you know, like YouTube, like the area of like media, media sharing mm -hmm. and like the, like the creation of like yeah. user, user created content. Oh, right. And like accessibility and stuff. And then that's like around like 2007, like that's like when it happened. Like that term was coined when like girls generation had like a sold out concert in Japan. And then I guess like, you know, like even though they're popular in Korea, it's like that doesn't mean they can be popular in Japan, right? You know what I mean? Like just because it's like another Asian place, mm -hmm. there's still, you know what I mean? There's still so many differences. And I feel like K-pop is different because there's like a very strong like visual element, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, there's always, there's always good singers. But then, like maybe there's like, when you think of K-pop, I feel like you think of like K-pop dances, right? right? And like, that was kind of like the first time when they're like, oh, these are like catchy songs, but then these are also like catchy dances, mm -hmm. they right? They can do in the club, mm -hmm. like, basically. You that, know, like that's Wonder their goal, Girls, right? right? Yeah, yeah, like they come up with like catchy stuff and like, you know, their dances go viral, right. like viral in the Philippines, viral like yeah. everywhere. And then it's like, you know, everyone gets exposed to it that little bit. And then it's like, they kind of just mm -hmm. keep building off of that. Like nobody, you know what I mean? Oh, like yeah, when I yeah. played that song for Erica, she's like, I know this song. I didn't even know it was like a K-pop group. I was oh, like, yeah, wow. like everyone knows the song, you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. It's like, but you don't realize like where you know it from. Dang, that's crazy. Um, yeah, I mean, user, like what you call it? User um, made created. Con created user content. Created I feel content. like that, it's like interesting that I feel like the K-pop community is also like growing in it itself because of those things. It's like, it's mm -hmm. to me, it's so smart. <laughs> like I think mm -hmm. the way that it they're kind smart. of structuring this K-pop's marketing yeah, is it's crazy. Like, wild. <laughs> yeah, it's oh man. Like I I can't yeah, I can't even I feel like I like I know how big it is, but I feel like I also don't know how big it is and stuff. Yeah. Sometimes when you look at the the videos of these like artists and stuff, they reach like hundreds of millions of views, like mm -hmm. way beyond anything else because mm -hmm. it's all globally and it's just it's it's so smart. Um but for me, I know that with that a lot of like people can kind of see that success or whatever. And again, they kind of just see it from a distance and stuff. And I kind of wanted to touch base a little bit on um, just some of the biggest misconceptions um, about either K-pop itself or the K-pop community, um, at least mm -hmm. in your guys' perspective. Because um, again, um, you know, I just want to get people to kind of get a window into um, just the perspective. So what, in your opinion, is the biggest misconceptions about the K-pop or K-pop community? Okay, <laughs> I'll go first. <laughs> so then, uh, well, I think for K-pop, it's kind of like I mentioned before. Like they like K-pop idols, like they're they're popular with like young people, but then they kind of have like a bad rap with like older generations. Yeah, and then I feel like that's just because mm, I don't know. I can't say that every idol is talented, but I can say <laughs> that every idol is hardworking. Right. Yeah, like Korea Korea is very unique in the sense that they have like a training system for like their idols. Like you know how here like someone could like just happen to sing really good like and then they'll get famous. Yeah. You know what I mean? Then their career could be sustainable because they make good music. Yeah. Right? But then over there like good music, like if you're going to be an idol, right? Like mm -hmm. good music isn't enough. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. everyone like the average training period is like 2 years, right? And they they could start like when they're 12 or like, you know, if they're like 18, that's kind of late. You know what I mean? Like, oh, it's like, it's like wow. ballet. You know what I mean? Like you either start young and like, you have a higher chance of success because, you know, people like, they like, you know, associating with an idol and like growing up with them, if that makes sense. Interesting. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're talking about age. Yeah, mm -hmm. age. 
<clears throat> is there any like, like idols out there that are like i guess Older? under the age of 18 or like like oh, that like. they blew up at that an early of an age like 12 or something i would say the one that like the most famous one i can think of is like boa because she blew up at like 14 my god and she's still active she's like now first generation right? yeah oh, she's really? like or she's like sec like the beginning of, of second, second generation okay. but then she's like an outlier in the sense that she's like an idol in her own league which is like kind of cool. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> She's dope. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, I feel like f- for me, one of the biggest um, misconceptions, um, I mean, you kind of touched base on it before, was I feel like a lot of people kind of associated K-pop with like specifically like just bubblegum pop yeah. at a certain uh, point where yeah. it's just like, you know, super happy. So for, like for the, the genre, like, right? Yeah, yeah, like that it it's, was just that. And that's why I like YG so much is because their uh, genre of music is like... It's hip hop, basically. Oh, yeah. R and B. You know what I mean? It mm-hmm. can get to bubblegum pop, you know, depending on the group, because they have many subgroups. Mm-hmm. But um that's why I'm like, well, this is K pop too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. this type of music. Like mm-hmm. it's a different link. Like if I were to just play the instrumental and the background music take out the lyrics of this people singing and then play it next to one of our songs it's like can't even really tell the difference like oh yeah yg is great at producing music like Mm -hmm. they're my favorite like in terms of quality um songs like actual music you know what i mean Mm -hmm. got it like sorry if i sound like a weeb right now but is um (laughs) is jay park under that or okay where where does he fit into that actually he's 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 aomg (laughs) he has his own label Oh wow! But he was in. Um, he was in Two PM, which is JYP. Oh JYP, which is like oh, Wonder JYP. Girls and stuff. Awesome. Such a bad man. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, no, I said. That. Oh, okay, gotcha. Um, so I there's YG, JYP, and then there's like oh, a third SM. one. SM. It's like those are like the big three, which I think is interesting too, because you know, like here, it's like we have record labels, but it's like, like oh, like you know, like who cares? <laughs> oh, yeah. But then like over there, it's like your label kind of defines you yes. in the sense that wow. like they're known for certain things or like they have a certain image associated with them, which is like, which I guess like kind of sucks because I feel like that's where the conception is like, oh, an idol is like kind of fake, you know, like they're just playing up this image. Oh. But then I feel like they are, but then <laughs> mm-hmm. like, that's like their job, you know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're acting for like their fans, you know what I mean? Like it's great if you can be yourself and be like loved, but I feel like that's very hard. Mm-hmm. to like accomplish in the industry in the industry yeah, yeah. uh yeah um definitely <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> um I, I actually want to bring up another um misconception that i mean i was enlightened about um not recently but i guess like prior to it i was i just made this assumption mm-hmm. that everyone in the group is quote unquote the same like it's the same person but i know that like i think mm-hmm. uh, or that's like they're all just like kind oh, of there's know, like 10 members you mean. but yeah. then you have like this like the lead singer or the rapper or oh. the the yeah everyone has some sort of title like yeah, yeah. like depending on the group role. yeah mm-hmm. a role like like I even think, yeah. uh, one of the roles is just being the youngest. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? That's yeah. a role. That's a role. Like, like baby spice kind <laughs> of. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But then you're expected to act cute. You know yes. what I mean? Like, oh, oh. Yeah. Like it's kind of like how you mentioned the generations thing. Like mm-hmm. it is. I feel like that's just in their culture that everything's very like structured. Like yeah. in a group, you know, it's like, like for example, twenty one, uh, YG calls them the ideal group in the sense that there's four girls. Mm-hmm. There's like the main vocalist. There's mm-hmm. the main rapper there's the main dancer and there's the visual. And he's like, that's to him. He's like, that's the perfect group because they like cater. Like they're each, yeah, they're each extremely strong in that one thing they can do well in. Gotcha. That's really cool. But they can do like, they can do everything though. Oh yeah. Yeah. But Mm -hmm. then they have like their, the thing that they excel at or their role is. Mm -hmm. What was the group again? 21. 21. 21. Okay. Gotcha. Would you say that, I know that Blackpink is really big Mm -hmm. right now. Would you say that they also kind of fit that Mold. mold? I feel like, they're they're coincidentally like the younger sister group of Twenty One. Are they from the same label? They're from the same label, yeah. Gotcha. And then there's four members, and right. then <laughs> I feel like, uh, kind of yeah. But then it, the line is more blurred now because I feel like times mm-hmm. are kind of changing to the sense that all like all rounders are being more appreciated. Mm-hmm. But then I understand why like you need because I guess how shows <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> i guess how shows and stuff work is for example like let's say there's a singing competition show right mm-hmm. you have to send like your best singer there you know what i mean 
Let's oh, say there's okay. a dancing show. You have to send like your best dancer there. Shows? Variety oh, shows. Okay. Oh, yeah. So then okay. it's like, so let's say you're a really good dancer, but you can't sing. But you still, but you know what I mean. Like you still have something to bring to the table. Like mm-hmm. you can still promote your group in this way and that. That's why it's like being an all rounder. Like it's cool, but it's like you know, like there's an advantage and a disadvantage the at the same time. Jack of all trades versus like a versus, master yeah. one. Yeah, I agree. Right. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Um, so now we're kind of <laughs> hitting our segment where we asked our audience a um question, <laughs> uh, pretty much, and we asked them what is the most iconic K-pop dance of all time. So mm-hmm. we're actually gonna talk about <laughs> them. Like, we're gonna discuss which one um <laughs> that we feel like it's gonna be in and the then next are we gonna episode. Do it? Just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I first I actually kind of wanted to play a little mini game. Okay. Um, so <laughs> um basically I'm gonna. Um, I pretty much created a list out of the um, all of the answers that we got from our Instagram followers. Oh, did you get a lot of answers? Um, kind of, yeah. But I mean, <laughs> it was like a lot of um, it was a lot of repeats. So we uh-huh. kind of um, sorted it out. And I'm actually curious um, how many of these dances that you actually know. So, so we just raise our hand. Yeah, well, you can't raise your hand because we have Spotify listeners. Oh. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, so you can just be like, "Yep," and "Nope." Uh, okay, um, okay, okay. But um, and knowing the dance doesn't mean like you know beginning to end the whole four minute. Piece or but like whatever. you like know but it. like you know like uh, let's say like four eight counts at least maybe or something that's so hilarious. Right. <laughs> like, the you know the point dance that's yeah. like what it's called oh the point dance yeah. like so oh yeah like so for example so like, nobody's would be like this so, <laughs> the literal point yeah okay well, not the, <laughs> but then yeah like the move that makes okay. the song Spotify famous list okay, okay. So gotcha. yeah 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 <laughs> so we're gonna go down this list and for everyone um i'm curious actually to know which one out of this list that you guys believe is the most iconic dance of all time so if mm-hmm. you're watching this on youtube please 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 leave it in the comments on spotify just let us know somehow <laughs> um but yeah so i'm gonna go down this list that we got from our Instagram followers, okay? So, first one, nobody. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wonder yes. Girls. Yes. Yeah, I feel like everyone knows that, and my nieces and nephews. Mm-hmm. Um, Wedding Dress by Yang. Yes. Like, the dance. <laughs> you, know yeah. you know the dance? Lyle Benega, man. Oh! oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, like, one part. <laughs> like, one part. <laughs> okay, dang, okay. Um, G, Girls Generation. Yes. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I was gonna do it. Like, I want to oh, do yeah. it so bad. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Um, by the way, if there's any names on here that I like butcher, I am yeah. so sorry, K-pop fans. Um, <laughs> but anyway, um, next one is Genie by SNSD. Yes, that's Girls Generation. That's oh. their like Korean like abbreviation. Oh, gotcha. So, okay, yeah, I didn't she. know. She day. Uh, what oh, was it, Genie? Genie. Genie. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. Okay, <laughs> cool. Um, next is, is all my Sorry, era. Sorry mm-hmm. by Super <laughs> Junior. <laughs> these questions because they're like very yeah. our age oh uh, i mean you it's know me. <laughs> like i assume people our age follow our instagram so probably <laughs> um yes we do know sorry sorry gotcha um next is lucifer by shiny by shiny? shiny yeah no uh, <laughs> i don't know it that's all right one. so yeah. that's the first one you don't know right yeah because it's, Eric, it's too complicated Dang. Okay. <laughs> yes. He did a, he That's why he's a K-pop up, mentor. <laughs> <laughs> That's our K-pop mentor. He teaches every Friday, guys. Not every Friday. Fridays at On One Studios at eight o'clock or nine thirty. <laughs> Follow On One K-pop on our Instagram. <laughs> Boom by Ah. By Blackpink. Yeah. By Blackpink. Nope. Gotcha. EXO. Growl. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> this, this is probably is, getting into the yes, generation we like left. Era, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, Wonder Girls like this. Yeah. No. And Wonder Girls be my baby. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's the one. If you guys find and dig through <laughs> YouTube hard enough, you'll find the video that, that these Me guys and made. Eric. <laughs> We're dancing. Um, Move by Taemin. Yeah. Wow. Dude, that's a good one. He has I'll solo. Show you later. No. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's gonna take like like. Pretty much like YouTube, all of these or Google all of these, and just look up these dances. Um, don't wanna cry. Seventeen. Oh, by like seventeen. No. Yeah. You gotcha. do. I do. I'm Eric. Just kidding. You're hundred <laughs> percent crazy. Um, card red moon. No. No. Well, no. that actually okay. just came out like two days ago. So. Oh, two days ago. <laughs> wow. And someone called it iconic. So I mean, we gotta just check kidding. it out. <laughs> <laughs> um, red velvet, Russian roulette. Yes. Yes, even I know that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, fake love by BTS. By BTS, no. okay, yeah. 
<laughs> and the last one we have on here is Butterfly by Luna. Oh, yeah. No. yeah. Was that one of the ones that you guys just talked yeah, yeah. yesterday? <laughs> Not yesterday. Or we did another weekend. Luna song, but like last year. I know. <laughs> <laughs> we had a Luna weekend, basically. Like, we was, there a, was there like a reason behind that? Because of Valentine's? or uh, It's just because they released a new album, and then all four of us just happened to be like really big fans. Oh, awesome. So we all just chose a song from the album to do. Oh, okay. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So... I mean, that pretty much wraps it up for today. Um, next time, we're really going to be talking about, I mean, you know all of these dances and stuff. You teach a covers class here. We're going to be talking about all things with K-pop dance covers and dance culture in, in general. The crossover, we mentioned Lyle Bonigo, the crossover with the urban community. So that's going to be on our next week's episode. Please stay tuned, guys, and we'll see you guys next time. Later. Later.